Hello gentlemen, welcome to our video on 15.6 practice. Here we're just going to take some opportunities to look at problems and go through, the, go through the solving process. So number 39 says a mixture of 0 0.2000 moles of carbon dioxide, 0 0.1000 moles of hydrogen gas, and 0 0.1600 moles of water vapor is placed in a 2.000 liter vessel. The following equilibrium is established at 500 Kelvin. We have carbon dioxide reacting with hydrogen gas in equilibrium with carbon monoxide and water vapor. So A says calculate the initial pre partial pressures of carbon dioxide, H2, and H2O. So to do that, we have to use Pivnert. That's how you find a partial pressure of a gas. So the first one we'll look at is carbon dioxide. So the partial pressure of CO2 is going to be nRT over V. So it's 0 0.2000 moles. I don't need to write that. We get it. Times the temperature. And I'm going to put three sig figs in my temperature there just to make this more of a valid problem. Okay, and when we simplify for pressure CO2, we get 4.10 atmospheres. Okay, so that's the first pressure. The other we'll do for H2. Same equation, nRT over V, moles of H2, we have 0 0.1000 moles, times R, times T, And we'll get for this one, was it 2.05? Okay, and lastly, for H2O, same equation, nRT over V, H2O is 0 0.1600 moles times R. And your pressure of H2O is 3.28 atmospheres. Okay, that's how you would do part A. Now part B. Is at equilibrium, the pressure of water vapor is 3.51 atmospheres. Calculate the equilibrium partial pressures of carbon dioxide, H2, and CO. Okay, so we need an ice chart for this. So if my equation, which is all gaseous substances, is like so, then you make an ice chart. Now we know our initial pressures. <clears throat> we just found them. For carbon dioxide, it was 4.10. For hydrogen gas, it was 2.05. Water vapor, it was 3.28. We weren't given any information on carbon monoxide, so it's zero. We're told in the problem, part B, that at equilibrium, water vapor is 3.15 in terms of its pressure. That's an increase by 2.25. Sorry, 0 0.23 atmospheres. So since they're all in a stoichiometric relationship of one to one, 
you and blue, they're all one to one. That means the change is going to be the same for all of them. So this is going to increase by 0.23. It's going to increase because these are both products. The products will increase. If one increases, the other has to increase. And here, my reactants are going to be decreasing since the products were increasing. And since they're all on a one-to-one -one ratio, they will all decrease by that ratio. Give me 1.82 atmospheres here and 3.87 atmospheres there. So B says, calculate the equilibrium partial pressures. Here they are. We have done so. C says calculate case of P for the reaction. Okay, so P can be found by using your equilibrium constant expression. We have your concentration, in this case it's not concentration, it is um, just your pressure, so you have your pressure of CO times your pressure of H2O over your pressure of CO2 times your pressure of H2. These are all partial pressures. Now we plug them in. So at equilibrium, 0 0.23 times 3.51 over 3.87 times 1.82. When we do this, we get 0 0.11 at our Kp. And this is letter C. Letter D is asking us to find K sub C now for the reaction. Well, K sub C and K sub P are related. In this way. So delta N is our change in moles from our balanced chemical equation. Up here we have one mole of each product, so that's two moles total. We have one mole of each reactant, that's two moles total. So we say the difference, we're taking the difference of gaseous products and reactants. These are all gaseous substances, so that's going to be 2 minus 2 for delta N. We do have K sub P, so let's substitute that in. We're looking for K sub C. R is... 0 0.08206 atmospheres, liters. T is 500 Kelvin. Raised to a power of delta N, which is products, two total, minus two of your total reactants, two moles. And two minus two is zero. Anything to a zero power, which is what this is, this is raised to the zero power, is going to be one. So this all reduces to one. So you have one times your K sub C, which is just K sub C. K sub C equals 0 0.11. Okay, so that's 39. 45 here gets into our video on... Um, applications of the equilibrium constant looking at reaction quotients. So I'll just do part A here. Uh, for part A, it says at 100 degrees Celsius, the equilibrium constant for the reaction, phosgene, the equilibrium with carbon monoxide and chlorine gas, has the value K sub C equals 2.19 times 10 to the negative 10th. Are the following mixtures of phosgene, carbon monoxide, and chlorine gas at 100 degrees Celsius at equilibrium? If not, indicate the direction that the reaction must proceed to achieve equilibrium. Okay, so for A, we're looking at three concentrations. And we want to plug these in to our reaction quotient to see if they equal K, which K is your constant at equilibrium. So we're looking to see if Q equals K. If not, then we're not at equilibrium. If it does, then we are at equilibrium. So we're dealing with concentration, so we use Q sub C here. It's going to be my products, my concentration of product. 
over my concentration of my reactant. And now we plug in. Carbon monoxide is 3.3 .3 times 10 to the negative 6. Cl2 is 6.62 times 10 to the negative 6. And phosgene is 2.00 times 10 to the negative 3. That's going to give me 1.1 times 10 to the negative 8. So for this particular problem, if my K sub C was 2.19 times 10 to the negative 10th, and I just found my Q sub C is 1.1 times 10 to the negative 8, they are not equal. My Q sub C is larger. Since my Q sub C is larger, I'm going to need to get it down. This value has to come down to this value to achieve equilibrium. So basically, the reaction is going right now. We're not at equilibrium, and we're trying to um, see which direction the reaction is going to proceed as it reaches equilibrium, because it will. It's either going to proceed to increase your concentration of your reactants or proceed to increase the concentration of your products. So it's either going to go left or right to achieve equilibrium. So we have to see which way it's going to go based on this value versus this value. Okay, we want this 10 to negative 8th to go down to 10 to negative 10th. So if we look at our fraction, in order to get this value to equal this one, to go down, my denominator must increase and my numerator must decrease. So in terms of the balanced chemical equation, that means your reactants must increase and your products must decrease. In terms of forward and reverse reaction, that means that your products are going to collide together. As they collide together, they're going to use themselves up, which means they're going to decrease and they're going to be forming more COCl2, which of course means that it's going to increase the concentration of COCl2. So the reaction will proceed to the left, favoring phosgene, which is COCl2, and increasing its concentration as it reaches equilibrium. So that is how you would analyze A, B, and C. I'm only going to do A here because B and C are just other examples of the same thing. All right, number 47. This one's a little faster, a little easier. At 100 degrees Celsius, K sub C equals 0 0.078 for the reaction. SO2, Cl2 in equilibrium with SO2 plus Cl2. In the equilibrium mixture of the three gases, the concentrations of SO2, Cl2, and SO2 are 0 0.108 molar and 0 0.052 molar, respectively. What is the partial pressure of Cl2 in the equilibrium mixture? So we're already at equilibrium because it says in an equilibrium mixture. So we know we're already there. So we don't have to do an ice chart because we don't have initial values. We only have equilibrium values. So we can go right to our equilibrium expression where we have SO2 times Cl2. over SO2Cl2. Now if I substitute K sub C is 0 0.078 SO2 respectively, remember this one goes here, this one here, is going to be 0 0.052 molar. We don't know the concentration of Cl2. That's what they're asking for, or almost. And SO2Cl2 is 0 0.108. So if we rearrange this and solve for Cl2's concentration, the concentration of Cl2, I'll do this over here, is 
is going to be 0 0.16 molar. And I'm confident you can rearrange that and do that yourself. So from here, we now want to find the partial pressure of Cl2. And again, we can find partial pressure using the ideal gas law relationship. So the partial pressure of Cl2 is based on its molarity, universal gas constant, and temperature. We know that N over V here represents moles per liter. That's the molarity. We already found that in our last step. So 0 0.16 molar, which is moles per liter. That's N over V times R. Ooh, wrong problem. And we have 100 degrees Celsius, so that is going to be in Kelvin, 100 plus 273, 373 Kelvin. And here your pressure works out to five atmospheres. Okay, last problem. For the reaction, I2 plus Br2 in equilibrium with 2 IBR, your K sub C is 280 at 150 degrees Celsius. Suppose that 0 0.500 moles of IBR in a two liter flask is allowed to reach equilibrium at 150 degrees Celsius. What are the equilibrium concentrations of IBR, I2, and Br2? So in this problem, they start by giving us your equilibrium constant and saying that we have an initial amount of our product. Since we're given an initial amount of product here, but they're asking about equilibrium values, we have to do an ice chart. Okay, so we know that IBR, we have 0 0.500 moles of it in a two liter flask. So it's gonna be 0 0.250 molar. And that's initially what we have here. And I'll leave units out for simplicity. We're not given any other information about I2 or Br2. So we can assume those start initially at zero. And that's all we have for this problem aside from the K sub C value. So using algebra, we're going to create relationships using variables. So we know that if my reactant is starting at zero, they can only increase. And my product is going to decrease. So we have to figure out in what ratio they will increase and decrease. Since, our, since the reactants are one to one and the product is a two here, that is the ratio in which they will change. So we use a variable one X for I2, it's going to increase by that amount. And since BR2 also has a one, it's going to increase by one X. And since it's a one to one to two ratio, IBR is gonna decrease by two X, double the amount of the others. And now for equilibrium, I just, do the mathematics, so zero plus x is x, zero plus x is x, and my decrease here is 0 0.250 minus 2x. Now to find what x is, because the question is asking what are the equilibrium concentrations, so ultimately I'm looking for these values for equilibrium. I need to plug these into the equilibrium constant expression, which is, IBR, concentration of it, squared over I2 times BR2. Now if I plug in, my numerator is this binomial 0 0.250 minus 2x. It is squared over 
I2 is you know, x, Br2 is x. And this is all equals k sub c up here, 280. Now, at the bottom here, I have x times x, which is x squared. In the numerator, I have a squared value. So if I take the square root of both down here, I just cancel out those squares. That's about 16.7. Okay, and now I simplify and solve for x. So multiply both sides by x. I get 0 0.250 minus 2x equals 16.7x. Add 2x to both sides. Now I'll go down here. I get 0 0.250 equals 18x. 18.7x, excuse me. Divide both sides by 18.7. And x is, I think it's 0 And now we plug that in. So here, 0 0.0133 molar is that x. 0 0.0133 molar is this x. We plug it in here and get 0 0.223 molar. All right, gentlemen, hope these helped. Adios.